uh, the topic is about delivering consulting engagements and satisfying clients. So prior to this stage, we've talked about the propose stage. So now we're going to be at the deliver stage. And we know that the deliver stage is where the call core work of all consultants actually are, right? I mean, that, that's, that's where it is. Um, it's really the delivery of your client engagements. Now, the engagement represents the time when the consultant's skills, knowledge, and service lines are actually applied. And we can look at this uh, as the deliver to satisfy, right? Before the delivery or the deliver stage, you have the proposed stage. So at this point, you're done with the proposal. And then the client is satisfied with the proposal, gave you that go signal. So now you're going to proceed with delivering the engagement. Now, remember that the main objective here is not just to complete the work that you're actually paid to do, but to actually satisfy the client, okay? And mainly, as you'll see in a while, when we talk about client satisfaction, we are making sure that the needs of the client okay, at that particular moment are actually met. Now, here's a sketch of how the deliver stage looks like. There are five steps. Now, I won't go through in this particular lecture uh the, the 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 details around each of the five steps okay in fact there are a lot of books that talk about these five steps some books have it three steps some books have it seven six okay the the whole idea is going to be the same what i will do is that i will talk about the five steps okay in in broad terms and then later on uh, in another lecture in another talk you will actually see the details around it. Now, in this particular framework, there are five steps when we're doing the deliver stage. You have the commence, the collect, the consider, the create, and then lastly, the counsel and consult. Okay. Now, they're easy to remember because they all start with the letter C. Okay. But eventually, you'll probably have your own mnemonic. And if you've noticed all of the other textbooks, they'll probably tell you the same thing. Now, while the consultant must generally progress in a logical order from the commence step to the last step, which is counsel and consult, there's going to be a regular jumping within the steps. So earlier, you're looking at this as if it were a linear process, but in reality, it's not going to be that linear. It would probably look something like this, okay? It's more like a star uh, pipe, okay? Sometimes you will start, and then you collect the data, but then along the way, you'll be doing a lot of counseling and consulting, okay? And then maybe some items, when you start to re reconsider things, you probably would want to collect more data again, and then, and then maybe you need to redesign how your engagement approach is going to be, okay? So it's not exactly linear, and it's not going to be strictly linear. But understand that these five steps, they happen when you are at the deliver stage, they don't necessarily have to be in strict sequential order. Now let's talk about the steps one by one in, again, in, in, gen, in general terms, okay? Uh, just to give you some, some idea of what it really means to deliver consulting engagements. Now the first is commence or the start, okay? Commence is concerned with planning and resourcing the engagement. So at this stage, you're trying to build the methodology of your engagement. What are you going to do? What's the approach? What's the attack? Now, generally, a lot of decisions have to be made. The direction and nature of these decisions will be shaped by the agreements made and information collected in the proposed stage. So your starting point in comments is what you've actually proposed, your proposal, and what the client agreed upon. Okay, But normally, it is only when an engagement is won that you get a fully detailed engagement plan okay you will have to refine you will have to tweak you even have to make some corrections along the way okay after your initial proposal has been accepted so when you're done with the proposed stage and as you know in the proposed stage the proposal is the end point of the proposed stage the proposal is not like a fixed 
uh, output wherein, okay, that's not going to be touched anymore. We can't change that. Okay. Uh, that's not usually the case. And even if the proposal is supposedly bound by a contract, you know, there are ways on how certain contracts can be adjusted, provided both parties, the consultant and the client, would agree later on. Okay. In any case, during the commence step, this is your opportunity to sit down a little bit more relaxed because you already have the engagement. Now you're starting to think, is my approach really the right approach? Now, the nature of a plan in a consulting engagement depends primarily on the scale and complexity of the engagement. Okay. The plan itself, even when you've started during the proposed stage, okay, that this is my plan. This is how we're going to attack the problem, right? But really, your plan would really be dependent on what you really want to accomplish. Okay. Sometimes the engagement can be very simple, straightforward. Probably you've done it in other clients in the past. It's just going to be the same thing. Okay, it's simple. At other times, it's really complex. Uh, it would really be volatile even. It would have a lot of dependencies. Even those who are, that are not in, con in the client's control, for example. And typically, when you look at a plan, oftentimes we look at it through the lens of project management. So the project management in a typical consulting engagement is not complex, but as you know, consultants are not really typically great project managers. I'm not saying that in absolute terms. There are consultants that are really good PMs. But the point here is that a PM and a consultant, well, it's ideal that you have them in separate roles, okay, played out by distinct people, okay? Because managing a project, managing an engagement takes a little bit of effort, a, a different type of focus, as opposed to actually doing the work or delivering the work, okay? And because that the plans are really dependent on your client, okay, and the, the atmosphere and the environment of the moment, an engagement plan needs to be comprehensive detailed, but it has to be flexible. It has to accommodate a lot of variations. It should accommodate a lot of things, especially if you are looking at dependencies that are not in your control and not even in the control of the client. Now, uh, the result of a consulting engagement may be the creation of the set of client deliverables or some predefined outcome. Now, a deliverable is a defined output, which is usually tangible, but sometimes intangible, but definitely something that the client can utilize. Okay. A deliverable, like in most cases in IT, can be a system, can be a software that you roll out. At other times, it can be just a, a roadmap or a plan or even a position paper okay, on what's going to be done, let's say, in the next three or five years. Or it can be training people equipping them with skills and knowledge that they can use uh, for longer term. It, it, can, it can really be any output, and that's dependent on their need, on what they really need. And all of these things, you have to understand from the, from the get-go, at the, at the beginning. Okay? And this is something that we consider when we're in the comment step. Now, when we go to the collect step, once you've already decided, okay, this is our approach, Whatever approach you take to helping a client, you need to collect information. You need to gather data. And the data, okay, the information is required to understand the clients and their issues, the scope engagements. You try to understand the impacts and the seriousness of the problems and to identify the solutions. So data gathering. At the collect step, you're doing data gathering work. So now, commence stage, you're, you've developed your methodology, your approach. Once you've pinned down more or less your, your methodology, now you understand what, what data do I need in order for me to be able to execute my approach uh, fairly well. Now, accurate and sufficiently comprehensive data is critical to the success or failure of your consulting engagement. You can't draw valuable conclusions without a relevant sample of data. And after we've collected the data, okay, now we're gonna go to the consider step or the analysis portion of the work, right? And this is where 
the consultant skills really come into the picture. Okay, this is where the, the expertise is directly applied. Okay, now that you've collected the data and you have that approach, you start to understand and analyze. Okay, what do I do now? Okay, what the what does the client really really need? And this is where you need to ask yourself whether you as a consultant can actually add value, okay, to what the client needs at that moment. Okay. And then you try to understand based on the data that you've collected, then you can come up with a decision. Okay, I mean, how are how how am I going to add value to, to my client? Now, as you're trying to understand what the client needs, you also need to understand what is the client not looking for okay sometimes we have this uh, tendency that since we're good at this we try to push that but maybe that's not what the client is looking for and you have to be uh, conscious about that now typically the client is not looking for the consultant to borrow his watch to tell him the time uh, that's a typical uh, term right that i mean if i if i want to know the time you know i, I can tell what the time is right I don't really need someone to tell me what the time is. And at this point, clients are really looking for meaningful analysis and recommendations. Okay. So if you're not looking for X, Y, Z, then don't give them X, Y, Z, even if X, Y, Z is your strong suit, right? Now, they're not looking for simplistic views, okay? Things that would lead them to maybe inappropriate or useless advice, okay? They want to be able to do something. In effect, if you were to give yourself a, a quick understanding of what you'd want to consider, consider how you can give your client progress. That's simple, right? If how do you help a client make some progress? That is what you need to consider if you're the, the consultant. So when you try to look at the client situation also, remember that only a few problems are really technical. As you probably have realized, when you're doing consulting, it is really a relationship business. So if you just try to understand and solve the technical aspects, you'll probably not come up with a complete solution. Okay? The human aspects play an important part in most businesses. And that is where you, as a consultant, need to be very good at as well. So as an IT consultant, you can't just simply be good in IT, IT. You also need to be good with people. Okay? And that's important. And that's what completes the skill set of a true IT professional. It's not just about the technical stuff. Well, the technical is, is what we call table stakes. That's expected in general, right? That you, you have a certain level of competence in the technical sphere. But you also need to have competencies as regards how you deal with people with human beings, with organizations, okay? How you manage dynamics in a particular uh, collective, okay? With certain relationships, how does one relationship differ from another relationship, okay? The human aspects, that is important to a client, uh, especially, and not just the technical aspects, okay? In fact, the reason why they've probably considered you or hired you was that they already know about your, technicals, your technical skills. Okay. At that point, they're not really just looking for your technical part. They're really looking for you to help them solve a problem. Now, once you've done your analysis, the next part is actually delivering it or creating the, the thing that would add value to the client. Right. So the create step is concerned with converting your findings, recommendations, or other outputs into a deliverable format that can be utilized by the client. Now, in some cases, it can be something concrete, like a system, okay? Or it can be something concrete, like giving them training. Or it can be a little bit more long-term, a little bit more fluid, like maybe guiding them on a roadmap for something that's like three or five years down the line. It is only when it comes to creating deliverables that you find out if the findings and recommendations that you did in the analysis or consider step that would be complete and coherent. So understand that the create step is not a one-time effort. Like, okay, I've done the create step, that's it, I'm done, complete, thank you. No, it's possible that you can have many deliverables. You'll have many iterations, perhaps of the same intended output. Okay, but, but 
it, it doesn't have to be just a one-time effort. The thing there is that whatever you've analyzed, it has to be made tangible that the client can actually use. Okay? Now, if the client is satisfied about it, then that's the time that you proceed to a stage wherein you can close it out eventually. But all throughout the delivery stage, you have this fifth step, which is counsel and consult. And this happens not just at the end, but throughout it. Okay? And again, this is where the relationship building comes into the picture. A client and the staff of the client should actually learn from you, from the consultant. And this is how you build your reputation as an effective consultant. It's not just simply delivering the output and then you're not going to bother yourself with what the client really is expecting you to, to teach them. Okay. Now, this can be small items of advice, you know, occasional comments or, or, or statements. It can mean even facilitating workshops, okay? training or skills transfer activities, or simply by observing how the consultant works, how you conduct yourselves professionally. Okay? They actually see you and they, they, they might even be impressed and they might even take you as an example. Now, how you discuss your findings and recommendations is important to the client acceptance as to what your findings and recommendations are. So the how, okay? How you conduct yourself. Remember, this is not just about the deliverable or the output. The process of getting through that, that's important because that helps define the quality of your relationship or engagement with the client. And we've said that so many times and we'll be saying that again, that consulting okay, is also uh, a relationship heavy type of activity. You have to take care of the relationship with the client. Okay? Now findings and recommendations uh, during the create stage, but even all throughout, it has to be presented with clarity, confidence and assertiveness. Okay? And there are many ways on how you can present uh, your, your output. And this is where uh, typical tips in business communications would come into the picture, right? So the, the other skills that you learn okay, as to how to present well, okay, all these things, well, they, they play a big role in, in, in helping you, making sure that you are able to present your findings and recommendations with clarity, confidence, and assertiveness. Now, the outcome of this particular step is that the client should understand what you're actually going to recommend to them. But it doesn't really end there, right? So in, in a way, that's the, the client satisfaction, okay? If the client is satisfied, then you can probably say that your counsel and consult step is, is spot on. But it shouldn't end there, right? It should lead to actions. It should actually lead to the client actually taking some action. Now, if a client takes no action as a result of your work, Okay. you've done your submission, okay, you've presented it to the client, okay, the client was nodding on, okay, yeah, yeah, that seems okay. And then, but in the end, the client didn't do anything after that, even if you're fully paid, then you've actually failed to add any value. And even if you're paid now, uh, oftentimes, you know, potential clients would confer to past clients, you know, they'd ask the past clients, oh, how did this consultant do? Now, if your, your past client said, well, you know, I mean, yeah, they were very good. They had very good presentations, very sophisticated. They know the technical stuff. But you know what? They didn't really help us. That will actually affect or impact your credibility as a consultant. So always remember, okay, as you're going through all of these steps, okay, uh, in consulting, you have to understand that you're really there to help deliver, okay, and then address the need of a client. And if you're unable to do that, then that becomes a problem for you as a consultant in the long run. And with that, uh, the, I end my short lecture on delivering consulting engagements. And, and for, for more information, you can actually read this particular chapter by, by Newton, the management consultant, mastering the art of consultancy.